Hello and welcome to the Wandel IP MPLS View Interactive Scenarios Learning Byte. I'm Gordon Mosley with the Education Services Department at Juniper Networks. I'm glad you're here. Let's get started. After successfully completing this Learning Byte, you will be able to use the IP MPLS View Interactive Scenarios features to view the results of network failures. IP MPLS View provides an Interactive Scenarios feature. An administrator is allowed to simulate node, link, interface, and site failures. Single or multiple failures may be introduced to the network model. When these failures are simulated, the IPM PLS views mathematical algorithms demonstrate the results of these failures and the changes made to the routing of particular label switch paths and traffic demands. The results of these failures can be viewed on a topology map and also through reporting that shows the effects of these failures. Let's look at the IP MPLS View Administrative Interface to see how this works. This is the IP MPLS View Administrative Interface. And I can see my modeled network. I see the nodes, I, I see the links that make it up and how they're connected and so forth. And there's a couple things I'd like to start off by showing you. I want to go into the Demands section or the demands tab down here in the network info panel of my interface and these are all the demands these are all all the traffic flows that are traversing this modeled network i'm going to i'm going to right click and give you an example of the types of demands we're talking about i'm going to right click and say highlight all and it shows me just graphically in my topology map all the different demands so i just want you to understand every node is involved here now I'm going to click in the map to erase that and, and I'm going to go to the tunnels tab and I'd like to do the same thing with the tunnels. I'm going to right click and say highlight all and it'll show me the label switch path that those demands are being pushed through. So, so there is you know, traffic and there are tunnels on this network and I just wanted to show you that before we started any simulation because remember the goal of this simulation is that when we fail a node or we fail a link I want to take advantage of Wandel's mathematical algorithms that can determine how would these demands be rerouted? How would these tunnels be changed because of these failures? And it allows me to know what would happen on my production network and hopefully design around this. So to begin a failure, in the menu I see simulation and I'm going to select interactive scenarios. I'm going to resize this dialog box and kind of bring it down to the bottom of the screen because I, I want to be able to see the topology map because some of the results of these simulations do appear there. So I've got it down here toward the bottom and, and let me show you some of the information we're presented with here. In the very first tab is nodes where, where it lists all of the nodes that are in my model that I'm allowed to fail. There's a link tab that displays you know, all the links that connect my nodes and I can select the different links and fail those and watch the results. I can also look at facilities. Now, this requires a little bit of configuration on my part. I would need to go define facilities and assign nodes to the facilities, and then I could fail an entire facility and bring all the associated nodes down, fail at the same time. Um, I can even go in and fail individual interfaces if I'd like. Okay? So what I'd like to simulate in this learning byte is node failure and, and link failure. So if I go here, I'd like to simulate failing the San Francisco node and also the Houston node. And we'll take a look at the effects of this. And, and so to initiate this failure simulation on the node tab, I'm just going to find Houston and check the box, select the checkbox here. Now when I do that, Houston jumps all the way up to the top of the list because it's the only node I, I selected, but it does jump on the list there. Let me scroll down and find San Francisco and select the checkbox there. I'm going to scroll back up and now Houston and San Francisco are the only two nodes and I want to fail these. So I go down to the bottom and I click on run. Now once the interactive scenario executes I can see in the topology map that Houston and its connected links show as failed. And I can see the same information here for San Francisco. 
Now, one quick thing I'd like to show you back down at the Interactive Scenarios dialog box is that the nodes, Houston and San Francisco, that we failed, if I go look at the link tab, the links that connect to those two nodes also automatically show up as failed. So I'll see that in there. So what? What does this do for me? I can see something on a map, but remember, now that we've simulated this failure, we've allowed the mathematical algorithms inside of IPM PLS View to calculate what would happen to our tunnels, what would happen to our traffic demands if this does happen in production. So at the bottom, I have an option to view the changes. And so I'm going to click here, and the first thing I'd like to take a look at is how did my links change? So when I select this report, you know, appears on my screen, and the main reason I want you to see this, I mean, we already know that, you know, by taking down Houston and San Francisco, that, that caused some links to go down. We already know that. But it doesn't just show me the links that are down. It shows me all of the links in my network because, and I know you already know this, but bringing these links down caused, you know, traffic demands and tunnels to be rerouted and, and throw traffic on some interfaces that didn't have as much before. So it allows me to see on top of what links are down, what links are still up, and then what's the new utilization on those links? How utilized were these links before? How are they now? What's the utilization difference now that we've created this failure on our network? And I'm doing all of this against my model. So that gives me information about how my links were affected. Let me close this. And another thing we looked at Let's look at uh, our tunnels. Let's see how our tunnels were changed. There were a lot of demands and, and, and fewer tunnels, so it might be easier to see how the tunnels were changed. All right, so let me make this a little smaller and kind of bring it down here to the bottom of the screen so we can see the map again. And bringing down the Houston and San Francisco node affected these two tunnels. I can see that I had a tunnel from Atlanta to Chicago and here is the path it was originally taking. And that we failed, let me click on it here, and I can show you in the map. So we had a tunnel from Atlanta to Chicago, and it was going using this path. It was going from link one to link nine to link five, and that was working great until we decided to down Houston and those affected links. And so it had to recalculate the path. And I can see this here. Here is the original path, the original path cost, the original number of hops, the original delay. I can see the mathematical algorithms inside of Wando calculated that this failure would cause a new path to be created, which has it going from Atlanta to Washington, D.C. to Chicago, which has a lower cost. It has only two hops as opposed to the original three. The delay is actually less than it was on the original path. I actually reduced the amount of delay by failing the Houston node by over 34%. So in this case, now I don't know why it was originally routed that way. There's probably a, a network design reasons why that tunnel took a longer path with higher delay. Probably wasn't part of my decision. But I can see what's different about this tunnel now that we've simulated a failure. I can see the same thing for the other tunnel we had that went from San Jose to Chicago. Here is the new path that was calculated by IPM PLS view, and here's the original path. Now this new path is a higher cost than the original path. It has a less number of hops, only four hops as opposed to the original path having five, but this new path, even though it's less hops, has more delay, actually 23% more delay. So this is the results of this simulation. How are the links affected? What additional traffic would they have to carry? And how would my tunnels be affected? But the one thing I can say about this is downing those two nodes weren't fatal to any tunnels. There actually was enough redundancy in this network that we could reroute these tunnels. So let's play a little bit more. Let's concentrate on this that I can see that, you know, San Jose to establish the tunnel that has been rerouted to Chicago through this path is really dependent on this LAX to Atlanta link. So what I might want to do to continue my failure simulation is let me close this down. Come back to the interactive scenarios dialog box and I'm going to sneak over to the link tab. 
and I'm going to find the LAX to Atlanta link in this list. And here it is, Atlanta to LAX. And so it looks like it's link 18. So I'm going to check the box to fail that link. And then I want to run the simulation again to generate new reports. So I'm going to run. And now I'm going to go view the changes. I'm going to view the tunnel changes and see what's different now. Let me resize this dialog box and, and kind of move it down below the map. Now downing that LAX to Atlanta link, it didn't affect the Atlanta to Chicago tunnel because it wasn't involved at all in that particular link. But look what happened to my San Jose to Chicago path. I can see right here that the path is down. There is no new path cost, new hops, new delay, because simply there's no way for San Jose at this point to get to Chicago. It, this link has failed because San Francisco's down. This link has failed because we failed Houston, and we just simulated the failure of that LAX to Atlanta link, so we've really painted San Jose in a corner. And so if these three events happen, San Francisco and Houston fail, and the LAX to Dallas link fail, we are going to lose the San Jose to Chicago tunnel. And so this, these are the, just some examples of some of the types of simulations that you're allowed to perform using IPM PLS View. Now when I'm done, I can save these reports. I can save them as a CSV file and import them into Excel or some other type of reporting application if I need to. Now when I'm done with my simulation, I'm gonna go ahead and close this dialog box and come back to the interactive scenarios and when you're done with this particular simulation the simplest thing to do is simply reset the simulation you know it brings the links and the nodes back up in your model and you're ready to start another simulation okay so this is an example of some of the interactive scenarios you're allowed to perform inside of IPM PLS view In this Learning Byte, we use the IPM PLS View Interactive Scenarios feature, and we used it to create and view the results of network failures. For more information about Juniper Network's training and certification programs, please visit our website. Thank you. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks certification program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.